everyone, this is Amina and today we are going to be reading a book about the life cycle of a butterfly. Beautiful Butterflies These butterflies are beautiful, but they did not always look as they do now. Just a few weeks ago, they were not butterflies at all. They were caterpillars and looked like worms with stubby legs. Their bodies changed many times before they became adult butterflies. Read on to learn more about these changes. Wow, these are some beautiful butterflies. What is a butterfly? A butterfly is an insect. Insect bodies have three sections, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. All insects have six legs, and some, including butterflies, have wings. They also have two feelers called antennae. Butterflies smell with their feelers and taste with their feet. A butterfly's body. A butterfly is built for flying and gliding. It has large wings and a tiny lightweight body. Its compound eyes see colors and patterns on flowers that our eyes cannot see. The patterns help guide the butterflies to the nectar at the center of a flower. A butterfly uses its long tongue called a proboscis to suck up the nectar. The antenna are for balancing and smelling. Compound eyes are made up of many lenses. The thorax supports the butterfly's wings. The abdomen holds organs that help a butterfly digest its food. Each wing has two parts, a small hind wing and a large forewing. What is a life cycle? An animal's life cycle is made up of the stages in its life from the time it is born to the time it becomes an adult that can make babies. Each life cycle has the same stages, hatching or being born, growing and changing into an adult. Life cycles continue as long as there are animals that can make babies. Here for a short time. An animal's life cycle is not the same as its lifespan. A lifespan is the length of time an animal is alive. Most butterflies have a short lifespan. They live only for a few weeks. Monarchs live longer. Monarchs live longer than other, but other butterflies do. Their lifespan depends on when they are born. Monarchs that are born in the spring live four to five weeks, but those born in the fall live for several months. From egg to butterfly. The first stage of the life cycle is the egg. The larva hatches from the egg. It is called a caterpillar. The caterpillar makes a case around itself. The insect is now a pupa. When the creolysis or case looks clear, the pupa has become a butterfly. The adult butterfly comes out of the case and is ready to fly. When an adult female lays her eggs, the life cycle begins again. The Magnificent Monarch This book is about the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. Monarchs are found in more places than other butterflies are. It is easier to spot their, their orange and black wings. Monarchs can fly much farther than other butterflies can. Each year, monarchs fly long distances. Monarchs need milkweed. Monarchs lay their eggs only on milkweed plants. If there are no milkweed plants in the area, there will be no monarchs either. Loaded with eggs. When you lift a milkweed leaf, you will likely find one or more tiny monarch eggs stuck to its underside, growing inside the egg. At first, the monarch eggs are white, but they soon turn dark gray. A caterpillar is growing inside each egg. It feeds on the yolk, which is food stored inside the egg. Let me out. After three to six days, the caterpillar is ready to hatch. It chews its way out of the eggshell and then eats it. Hungry Caterpillars The tiny caterpillars is green when it hatches. Soon its skin is covered with spots and stripes. Once they appear, the caterpillar gets down to work, eating. Chomp, chomp, chomp. The caterpillar has strong jaws for chewing leaves. Milkweeds, milkweed leaves are the only food it eats. The caterpillar eats about 30 leaves to get ready for the next stage of its life cycle. The more it eats, the bigger it gets. Caterpillar parts. A cap caterpillar has simple eyes that see only light and dark. It finds its way by using its tentacles. Each caterpillar has a spinneret under its head for making silk. The silk plays a very important part in the next stage of the life cycle. A closer look. Have you ever seen a caterpillar up close? Look at this one and study its body parts. Now look at the butterfly on page 7 and compare its body parts to those of this caterpillar. The cap caterpillar feels with its tentacles. A caterpillar breathes through tiny holes called spiracles along its body. Its rear tentacles are also for feeling. 
Some caterpillars do not have any tentacles. The spinneret is for making silk. The thorax has tr six true legs, three on each side, with claws for gripping. These legs will become six long butterfly legs. A caterpillar digests its food inside its abdomen. On the outside, the abdomen had ten prolegs. These little stumps have hooks for clinging to plants. Too big for its skin. The caterpillar eats a lot and grows quickly, but its skin does not grow along with its body. The skin gets so tight that the caterpillar has to molt or shed its skin. The caterpillar does not shed its coat only once. It sheds four times while it is still growing. After each molt, the caterpillar pulls itself out of its old skin. It then rubs off its face mask, which is black skin on its face. Growing and molting. A soft new skin forms under the tight old skin that the caterpillar sheds. After the caterpillar molts, the new skin hardens around its bigger body. The caterpillar grows and molts again. It is twice as big as it was the first time it shed its skin. It doubles its size again by the third molt. It is now almost one inch or 2.5 centimeters long. Almost there. By the fourth molt, the caterpillar has grown even more. It is now almost fully grown. The growing stage between each molt is called an instar. Taking a walk. After the caterpillar molts the fourth time, it takes a long walk. It looks for the perfect place to get ready for the next stage of its life cycle. The caterpillar shoots a silk string from its spinneret. The silk is like a rope ladder. The caterpillar uses the silk to pull itself over leaves, rocks, and branches. The right spot. The caterpillar keeps moving until it finds a safe space from which to hang, such as a leaf or a twig. When it finds a suitable spot, it starts to squirt silk. The caterpillar turns its heads from side to side over and over to make silk mat. Then it makes its tiny silk knob called a button on the mat. The caterpillar will attach itself to the button just before it begins the next stage of its life cycle. The caterpillar keeps walking until it finds a storage place from which to hang. The caterpillar uses the hook on its last set of prolegs to attach itself to the button on its silk mat. The caterpillar then uncurls itself un until it is hanging upside down. Amazing change. While the caterpillar hangs upside down, it molds for the last time. Its skin splits from head to tail. The caterpillar wriggles free of its skin without letting go of the button. Goodbye, stripes. Hello, pupa. Once the caterpillar is free of its old skin, a hard case forms around its body. The case is called a creel crease. A ca the case is called chrysalis. The inside, the insect inside the chrysalis is now called a pupa. Caterpillar soup. The caterpillar's body changes completely inside the chrysalis. It dissolves or breaks down into a green liquid. Butterfly parts such as wings start forming in this soupy mixture. Inside the chrysalis. The chrysalis protects the changing pupa. At first, the chrysalis looks green because the caterpillar is dissolved inside. By the second week, the chrysalis is clearer. Look carefully. You can see the pupa starting to change into a butterfly. When the chrysalis becomes totally clear, the butterfly is ready to emerge or come out of its case. Third stage. The pupa is the third stage in the life cycle of all butterflies. Each type of butterfly pupa has a different chrysalis. An owl butterfly, for example, emerges from the chrysalis that looks like a dead leaf. A completely new look. The newly formed butterfly pushes itself out of the chrysalis. Its wings are wet and weak and its body is full of liquid. The monarch hangs from the empty chrysalis and flaps its wings. It pumps liquid from its body into the black veins of its wings. The wings grow bigger, bigger and stronger as the veins fill with liquid. Taste bad? Stay safe. The butterfly cannot move while its wings are drying, but the milkweed leaves it ate as a caterpillar keep it safe. The leaf contained a poison that is now in the butterfly's wings. The poison can make birds and other animals sick. Hungry birds soon find out that even though orange wings look great, they taste terrible. They learn to stay clear of monarchs. Metamorphosis The change from caterpillar to butterfly is called a metamorphosis. The word metamorphosis means change of form or shape. Metamorphosis is the total change of an animal's body from one form to another. After metamorphosis, there is no longer a caterpillar. Instead, there is a beautiful butterfly. A brand new life. With its new body, a butterfly leads a new life. 
As a caterpillar, it could not go far on its stubby legs. As a butterfly, it can fly long distances. The caterpillar did not see well, but the butterfly has good vision. The caterpillar chewed leaves by its strong jaws. The butterfly drinks nectar through its proboscis. Male and female. Can you spot the differences between the butterflies on this page and the one on the next? Male monarchs have dark dot on each of their hind legs. Hind wings. The dots are made up of scent scales. When a male is ready to mate or make babies, it rubs its scent scales with its hind legs. Rubbing its scales creates a scent that attracts females. One-time parents. A monarch only mates once in its lifetime. A male and female mate so that female can lay eggs. The butterflies do not ling live long after they mate. The eggs hatch quickly, however, and the life cycle starts all over again. Flying south. Monarchs are the only butterflies that migrate or travel long distances. Cold weather kills monarchs, so those born in autumn must migrate to warm places for the winter. Most North American monarchs fly to Mexico or California. Since they must travel so far, they often glide or let the wings ca wind carry them. The monarchs travel south in huge flocks. Millions of monarchs fill the skies. When they reach their winter home, they rest in tall trees. So many monarchs pile on top of one another that they totally cover the trees. They stay very still to save energy. Heading home. In April or May, the monarchs start to fly north. On this journey, the monarchs fly in smaller groups than before. They're heading home, but they will not make it all the way. They stop in areas with milkweed plants to mate and lay eggs. The butterflies die after mating, but their eggs hatch and the life cycle starts again. Starting over. The new caterpillars become pupas, change into monarch butterflies, and continue the northbound trips their parents started. They too stop to mate and lay eggs, starting the life cycle again. Before the butterflies reach home, the life cycle would have been completed six times. Monarchs in danger. Monarchs lay egg only on milkweed. If they cannot find healthy milkweed plants, monarchs will not lay eggs. People build roads and buildings on fields where milkweed grows and they kill milkweed because they think it is ugly. You can help monarchs by convincing your parents and neighbors not to kill these plants. Get a group of your friends to help you plant milkweed or move it from gardens to wild areas. Fewer places to rest. Year after year, monarchs fly to Mexico and California for the winter. They return to the same places and often to the same trees. These winter sites have just the right climate and parents and plants and are the only areas where monarchs can survive. Unfortunately, the sites are getting smaller. People are cutting down trees to sell the wood and clearing the land to make roads and buildings. There are laws to protect some of the monarch winter sites, but other sites are still in danger of disappearing. Welcome butterflies. Butterflies do an important job. They spread pollen. As butterflies drink nectar from flowers, pollen from the flowers stick to their bodies. This pollen rubs off on other flowers and the butterflies that the blood butterflies visit. To make new plants, pollen must be spread from one plant to another. Many butterflies draw, die because the flowers on which they feed are sprayed with pesticides. These chemicals are meant to kill pests, but they kill helpful insects too. A garden without chemicals is healthier for all living things. For a butterfly, friendly garden, ask your family not to use pesticides. Butterfly gardens. Like monarchs, many other butterflies are losing the plants they need to survive. You can help butterflies in your area by planting the flowers on which they feed and lay eggs. Favorite nectar plants include Xenia, Black-Eyed Susan, Marigold, Sweet William, Verbena, and Lantana. Butterfly lay eggs on daisies, snapdragons, hollyhocks, clover, violets, and dill plants. Rest for a minute. Make sure your garden is in a sunny spot and is sheltered from the wind. Butterflies love to spot, stop and rest in the sun. If you set out a shallow pan of water, you might see a butterfly stop for a drink. Raise a monarch. If you want to watch a butterfly go through its life cycle, you can raise a monarch butterfly yourself. You must promise that you will allow the butterfly to fly away as soon as it is ready. Make sure you have enough time to care for a caterpillar before you decide to raise one and ask your parents for permission before you start. You will need a large clean jar, a metal lid or a cloth which holds to cover the jar, milkweed leaves, a sturdy twig, an adult to help you with some of the steps, a notebook in which to record your observations. Cover the bottom of the large jar with a gravel or leaves. Ask an adult to help you poke holes in the lid. If your jar does not have a lid, use a cloth with a small hole such as a cheesecloth. You can also use part of a nylon stocking. 
Find a milkweed leaf with eggs or a caterpillar on it. Break off the leaf, put it into the jar and cover the jar with a lid or cloth. Do not touch the caterpillar or the eggs. Make sure the caterpillar has light but do not place it in direct sunlight. Each day add fresh milkweed leaves and take away the old leaves. The caterpillar will need 20 to 30 leaves over the next few days. Make sure you also have a twig in the jar. Why will it need the twig? Check the caterpillar often. Keep track of its molds and other changes. After the last mold, the caterpillar will hang from the twig you put in the jar to become a pupa. The pupa will change each day until it breaks out of its chrysalis as a butterfly. When its wings are dry, the butterfly will start to flap again. It is getting ready to fly away. Goodbye, butterfly. And that brings us to the end of this book. I hoped you learned something new and I will see you again very soon with a life cycle of another animal. Bye-bye.